Today we are playing 6 player fixed card game on the map which continents are made from triangles. So welcome to the Trigons Labyrinth, to the Trigonometry Madness. I'm the Red, the last player in this game, so not sure which continent I will yet go for, but I do not need to know immediately, I will just go for the one nobody will be going for. As it will just be dumb to fight for a continent with someone when there are so many of them, meaning there will be definitely one which will be uncontested. Obviously to capture a continent as soon as possible would be the best, I would start gaining troops faster than anybody else and with that I would have the advantage being the most influential player in the game. But as you can see I don't have any troops in the two of the smallest continents, so I will definitely have to go for something else. And actually I already decided, I will be going for the most left continent called Crystal Garden. It's actually the most suitable continent for me to capture, basically all of the territories are made of ones, and as you can see nobody has intended to go for it. And to be honest I thought I will take two turns to capture it, but by seeing that there were only two territories left with me having four troops, I decided to fully capture it immediately. As the sooner you start receiving extra troop bonuses the better for you, though the downside of immediately capturing a continent is that you could bring other players attention towards yourself, and they could easily invade you if you don't have enough troops to guard your borders. But this is where the alliances come to the place, we were already allies with Green with him sending me the request in the beginning of the game, and now I decided to send the alliance request to absolutely everyone so they would be focusing on attacking each other, while leaving me alone and letting me receive those sweet sweet continental troop bonuses. The good thing is that players usually tend to focus on capturing a continent for themselves firstly rather than trying to invade someone, so I'm actually very glad that the orange player didn't immediately capture his continent while he definitely could, leaving it for another turn. So with that the orange player might just finish capturing his continent leaving me alone at least for that turn. But alright, after all I guess he invades me. And actually he was the player I was worrying about the most. Well orange, green, and pink. But the green player was my ally, and the pink player accepted my alliance request. And actually it might be good for the orange player that he invaded me, because I really considered invading the orange player myself after receiving continental troop bonuses, as I wasn't sure how long other players would let me hold a big continent, so relocating myself to the one border smaller continent would have been a very safe decision. And at the best case scenario actually I would have ended up holding both of these continents. But I actually wasn't able to hold my big continent, and with the orange player invading me, as you can see I had to retaliate and invade him as well. I think that was actually the best decision, as I'm actually stronger than him, I have quite more territories than him which let me receive bigger territorial troop bonus. So I actually should prevail in our fight, especially when I was favored with a very good blitz roll when invading him through his border. Though even if I prevail over the orange player, it could obviously still go wrong for me. As I could get started to getting attacked by other players, so if that happened I would lose the game. But basically I don't really have other choice, letting the orange player hold his continent would mean to let him destroy me. As I cannot really relocate myself to somewhere else. I have some territories in the middle but there are a bunch of other players troops with including the orange players ones as well. And to just start building my troops to one big army and turtle probably wouldn't really work out as well, as first of all it could probably be hard to find a suitable neutral place, someone sooner or later would try to capturing that continent whichever continent it would be, and with me only receiving 3 troops per turn while others would be receiving a bunch of troops for their continents, would mean losing the game as well. So this is why after getting invaded by Orange I came with a decision to fight him back. But mostly because I can count on the green player not attacking me, at least I put the big hopes in that, though I do not really have a better choice either way, and also because there are no other players who would be going for continents and expanding close to us, all of the rest 3 players seem to be expanding in a completely different side of the map. Otherwise I think it wouldn't have been that smart to fight the orange player back, 
then I think it would have been a better decision to stay neutral and wait till other close players start fighting each other, and only then try to recapture my continent. So I would say it really depends on the context. Too bad the green player doesn't help me to attack orange, as it would have definitely let me get a strong position with me being able to hold my big continent. But on the other hand he doesn't really have to, and actually it would be the smartest for him to expand himself towards other continents to start receiving more troop bonuses, while letting me and the orange player to fight it out, so, then might actually taking over our lands after we destroy each other. So the green player is being very wise by not helping me out to attack orange. Though with that he is more like a neutral person to me rather than a serious ally. Anyway, the good news is that the orange player has stopped attacking me for now, or at least he didn't attack me that turn. But I think he really won't anymore, as by trading in a set I thought that he will definitely go on the rampage to attacking me as much as possible. But he backed out and actually let me hold my continent. So I think for now we will just be neutral towards each other, so unless I will see that it would become very easy and worth for me to wipe him out from his continent, so if he likes started wasting a bunch of troops on the other players. But if not, then I think we will be good towards each other. There's no really a big reason for me to fight the orange player anymore when my continental troop bonus is twice as big as his. So it's better for me just to assure having myself a strong position. I know that even if the orange player decides to invade me after a few turns, that I would be much stronger than him, and with that would be able to retaliate against him easily, or might even completely destroy him. But if there's no really a good reason to attack him, then I think it would just be the best for me to hoard my troops right now and continue getting stronger. I think I'm actually in the best position right now, as with a bunch of players being on the right side next to each other there should definitely be some big conflicts going on, and actually one of them has already started with the yellow player invading purple. And after the players deal on the right side, the conflicts will continue going on in the middle, so whichever player prevails, they will get to me the last, with me being in the most left continent. So the situation actually looks promising to me if it goes in the way I think. The purple player is basically already dead, and the next one should be the yellow player with him being between the green and pink players, so eventually he should get attacked by one or another, so unless he has very strong alliances with them, but I really doubt so. And actually I have no idea whether I will actually succeed taking and guarding that continent in the middle at all and whether I should actually capture it fully. But right now I started adding some troops there so the green player would expand towards the yellow player's side, and the pink player towards the yellow player's side as well, or like going for the purple player's continent. So then actually the green and pink players should meet in the middle, and with them getting into a big conflict I should win this game. And alright. I didn't actually expected the green player so drastically crush the orange player after he hasn't helped me out to attack the orange player before. But that's just really awesome that he did now. Which to be honest I think was a big mistake, as with him not having enough troops to completely take the orange player out, and then with him fortifying his troops from the orange player's continent back, I will just take the orange player out by myself taking over his continent. So actually now I will be having another good continent which will be far away from other players, while the green player if he wants another continent, then he will have to take the one next to yellow and pink, and then probably expect to get attacked into it sooner or later. Or he could technically consider taking the continent which is surrounding the orange player's continent, and I would be fine of him getting it, but the thing is that he will just be shielding me from whichever player who eventually becomes the strongest in the right side. So actually I do not really care which continent the green player is going to go for, he could even take the one which I started capturing but haven't finished yet, as he would just be shielding me from the right side. Most importantly he would stick being a good ally and wouldn't invade me into any two of my already captured continents. But I think it would be the best if he pushes himself towards the yellow player and then eventually meets with the pink player, who to be honest is getting quite strong, so I don't really like it as he could end up becoming even stronger than me, 
but what I like is that he is using his troops on attacking other players, so that's promising for me, so as long as the pink player stays in the alliance with me. But even then I think I should be able to deal with him with the green player helping me out. So that's another question whether he would do that or not. But for now it seems that the yellow player will be obviously the player to get out from the game next. There's just no way he survives being between the green and pink players, and at the same time being the weakest player in general. So now after observing this map for a little bit and getting my first impressions, what I can say is that probably the best continents when it comes to the short term are the two smallest ones, but with that you should try to expand like the pink player did. The orange player in his first turn didn't immediately capture his continent while he could, then immediately got himself into a conflict, and after that becoming neutral, that continent bonus wasn't that much good for him anymore when getting way fewer troops than the big continent players and not being able to expand. Then probably the best continents when it comes to the long term are the most left and the most right continents, as by being in one of the corner continents you could probably avoid the conflicts the most in the comparison with the players who have their continents in the middle, and who will eventually should get attacked by either one of the sides, so unless they would be able to expand to one of the sides themselves and take over it. But also important thing to take into account, that it could be the best to stay away from the places where there are a bunch of players, and try being in the place where you some more room of expanding. And then of course another tip is to not forget about the alliances, you want that other players would be destroying each other while leaving you alone. It looks like I have strong alliances with the green and pink players, and it seems that we are actually the ones who will get to the 3 player endgame. So what I just hope that while they're friends with me, they're not the friends with each other, but I guess we are going to see it soon, and what will be the real alliances once 3 of us are left. I think that would be good if the two of the pink players territories from the left side would be removed, so like he couldn't attack any territories here or so, so after wiping out the yellow player from his continent, he would be forced to attack the green player assuming if wanting to stay in the alliance with me. And actually I was really thinking if I should actually capture that continent in the middle or not as I thought I could bring the other players attentions towards myself and with it some alliances could be broken. But after all I decided to be greedy and actually captured that continent, as what I mean is that the pink player was getting very strong with quickly expanding his lands, so I didn't want to get far behind. As after all I'm not guaranteed that he will attack green once he is done with yellow, that's possible that pink will break alliance and attack me. And actually I'm not sure if the green player has just quit or had a temporary connection issue. But before he attacked the army of the yellow player, he placed an army of troops next to my continent towards my undefended against him border, and I guess it wouldn't make much sense with us being such good allies all this time, so unless he would see the threat in me and with that potentially consider to betray me. So I'm actually suspicious of him. But I mean it doesn't worth to get into a conflict with him when the main dominating power which is balancing me out is the pink player, so if I attack green, then I would give away the game for the pink player, he would end up having more troops than me and the green player combined. So I'm not sure how the game actually goes, I guess a lot depends on the green player. I think it would be the most ideal if he stayed neutral and the pink player just continue expanding into his lands while crushing his troops. But alright, the green player actually quit the game. Which is a bit unfortunate because even if I lost, I would have preferred the game with the three real human opponents fighting it out. But now with the green player becoming a bot, obviously it just makes the most sense for the two real opponents to use all of their troops on each other while leaving the bot alone, as usually it's very easy to deal with the bots once you deal with your real opponents, so unless you're barely alive. So once making sure that the green player became a bot, I had to immediately betray and invade the pink player, otherwise if he had hit me first, then I would have lost the game, especially with the green bot being the pain for me. But assuming the pink player is a lower ranked player who wouldn't know that he should have ignore the bot instead of staying in the alliance with the real human opponent, then I could have not attacked him, and then expected that he would be actually attacking green. 
but like if he actually hadn't done so, then I obviously would have lost the game like I said. And I don't want to take the L, I want to bring the W to the house. So I did what was the best decision for myself and invaded the pink player into continents I was able to reach. But assuming the pink player would have been much stronger than me and I wouldn't have a decent chance to fight him, then I could have pretended to stay in the alliance with him and hope that he over destroys himself on green letting me to make a comeback. But since we were both as strong, I just had to betray and attack him rather than having some hopes which could likely be false. I think that was a big mistake for the pink player to not crush my biggest army while he could, instead of getting the attacker's advantage by himself, he left it to me. And another big mistake is to leave his biggest armies next to the bot's borders, as they will either stay blocked or the green bot will just simply crush them and make me even easier to deal with the pink player. And actually I myself ran out of time to fortify one of the armies from the most left continent, well actually not ran out but clicked on the wrong territory, so instead of an army I fortified one troop. Looking to the troop counter it seems like I'm crushing the pink player, but it could still go wrong if the green bot cuts in the middle and I won't be able to fortify my armies from the left to the pink player's continents. So might really depend what the green bot does as it could potentially let the pink player make a comeback if I become cut off from him and he's actually able to hold his continents. But alright, the bot stopped and I actually received a bunch of troops, and even though I didn't want to use the wild card for the 6 troop set, I just had to. I just needed to make sure to invade the pink player into his continent and I need to destroy him as soon as possible. Otherwise with the bot becoming very strong, actually the bot could end up winning the whole game. So actually with the pink player not being that much of a big problem anymore, I decided to invade the bot into his continents as well, with the troops I wasn't using anyway. It is good for me to increase my number of territories as it will let me get a bigger territorial troop bonus. And then I do not want that the bot would invade me into my last continent which still lets me get extra continental troops and which is not that much accessible to the pink player. But most of my advantage will come to the number of my territories. And actually the pink player has just had enough and quit the game as well. So I'm left to deal with the bots and that is going to be very easy. So let's actually skip the boring part to the victory screen. And now for another non-classical map I would recommend you watching this video as well. That's another interesting game with a lot of interesting attacks, diplomacy, and strategy. So make sure to check this one out as well.